What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman, aka Allfires. Now this week we've actually gotten a ton of details from industry insiders about new characters, new actors being cast to play those characters, and plot points for films. Everything from Guardians of the Galaxy, Loki Season 2, and even the upcoming Deadpool and Wolverine. Today we're going to focus on the reveals for Loki Season 2 over the last week. Most of these reveals coming from industry insider Daniel Rickman about a brand new villain that looking back on it should have been pretty obvious obvious given what we saw in Loki season one, but also which actress has been cast to play her. We'll talk about what's going on with some other characters and how this all plays into the main plot of the season. It's becoming a lot more clear now that we have these details, and I think we can tell some of the stuff that's upcoming now with what we learned in the last week. We're going to break down the most recent updates for what's going on with Loki season two, then I'll explain how this plays into the plot and is of course connected to Kang. But first, if you could grab the subscribe button, we do daily Marvel content at the channel, and that's all we do. Everything from official Easter egg breakdowns, trailers and reviews, to the occasional industry insider report and everything in between. So if that sort of thing's for you, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below that will automatically enter you to win our ongoing PS5 giveaway, which we will easily hit by month's end, as well as our daily comic book giveaway. We'll announce a brand new winner at the end of this video. So again, all you gotta do, be a sub, leave a comment, stick around at the end of the video, we'll announce a brand new winner there. Okay, so this story actually started less than two days ago, late on December 2nd, in an exclusive from Deadline, quote, Game of Thrones alumna Katie Dickey quietly joined the season 2 cast of Disney Plus series Loki, sources tell Deadline. Details about Dickey's character are being kept under wraps, but I hear she is playing the villain. They go on to accurately point out and for a little context that principal photography, the main part of the shoot for this series, has already been completed. It was actually wrapped back on October 17th, meaning everything we're about to talk about in this video, while new and breaking for us, has already been shot as part of the series. Now Daniel Rickman went one step further in an update yesterday that said, hashtag Loki season 2 possible plot, Katie Dickey is actually the main villain. She plays an older version of Sylvie trying to right her wrongs and she is using rogue TVA agents to erase the new timelines that appeared after the death of He Who Remains. Then lastly, industry insider My Time to Shine Hello, the anonymous internet scoopster also weighed in and confirmed this, but I think there are two loaded words in this description, both villain and version, and I want to talk about both of them. First and foremost, Loki season one sort of painted Sylvie as the quote unquote villain until it was revealed she was just trying to bring the whole thing down and reach He Who Remains. Ultimately, for a while, Loki was aligned with her in that goal. I think that may be much in the same, where just at the beginning of season two, she's shrouded again, but where in principle King had offered her and Loki to take over his operation, it seems as though he was telling the truth, and when she killed him, all of his other versions spawned, and now even though she didn't agree to take his position, she's taken his position anyway. She's now pruning all of the timelines that are popping up in the same way that he who remains used to prune all the rogue timelines that didn't fit the sacred timeline. So in essence, while she didn't want to do this, she has been basically taking the place of King. Now, when we say version, that's the other loaded word in this description, I think it's pretty clear that this is not a variant of Sylvie, but rather Sylvie's logical conclusion. The same Sylvie that we saw during Loki season one, she will just be drastically aged up because she will have been doing this for quite a long time up and down the timeline since we last saw her at the end of Loki season one. So I'm not sure she's classically the villain and more of an antagonist for a while before we find out that in essence, she might be even working for a different version of King, but more on that in a separate video. Now there's been some other cast rumors in the last couple of days and let's start with Raphael Castle who is rumored to be playing one of those rogue TVA agents that's working for the older version of Loki possibly TVA agent X5 and back when they were doing principal photography for the show there were a ton of set videos and set photos taken at a theater it's revealed that Raphael Castle's X5 might just be a TVA agent who escaped into the 70s to become a movie star yeah much like Kingo's been a movie star throughout the ages he just goes into one particular timeline and decides to be a movie star there and I really think that's where we can add some contextualization to the scene in an attempt to find Sylvie and go after her as looking for reasons and answers for what just happened with Kang. They're going to end up at the 70s in a theater following X5 as part of that breadcrumb trail. Now one other character rumor we did get is Kihoi Kwan's character in season 2. He's rumored to be playing a character named Aerobius. 
who will go by the nickname Bio, you can see the obvious jokes there, a character quote in charge of the tech at the Time Variance Authority, so basically if you've ever watched any James Bond, he's the Q of the TVA. But I will also mention, and to me one of the most interesting updates, coming from trusted industry insider Charles Murphy over at Murphy's Multiverse, this is what he tweeted out in a response to a random tweet at him. Now the random tweeter first said, quote, don't you think it's a cop out after season one ending to have Kang with barely any screen time? Kind of diminished the whole season just basically talking about the rumors we heard during this video and he responded back nobody talking on Twitter truly knows the whole plot of the show or how much screen time anyone is getting basically blanketly aimed at anybody who thinks they know the whole plot as if it's definitive from certain details that we get when the real truth that Charles is enumerating here and so aptly is that we get these snippets and we try to build a picture that's part of the fun the same way when we get an anonymous 4chan plot leak we either tear it apart or buy into it either way I always remind you guys to take this stuff with a grain of salt because truly truly Marvel movies more than any other movie have a reputation now of not only being rewritten several times on the spot, but then changing major things in reshoots, which may still be ahead of the show, considering it's still seven or eight months from release. The other point I will make as it pertains to these rumors is remember when all of a sudden Henry Cavill was cast as Hyperion and he was going to be a part of Loki season two, apparently working for Kang. Not only is there a clear shot that he will not be in the MCU now, but he's agreed to a contract extension with Superman. We've never really made it clear if there's any clauses in those contracts that doesn't allow you to be in the universes at the same time, but I'm guessing there are, and considering the size and scope of that contract, him leaving The Witcher as well, there's no Hyperion in Henry Cavill's future, and I doubt there's any Hyperion in this show. So you take these rumors with a grain of salt, that was a very, very hot and wildly reported rumor three months ago, and now it seems almost certainly that none of that was real. Keep that in mind as we go forward and approach these shows and movies in the future with any details like this, you gotta make up your own mind, and it's all basically grain of salt territory until Marvel Studios officially confirms it. Guys, let me know all your thoughts down below quickly. Let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go and announce a new winner. We're still giving away a PlayStation 5 now at a million subscribers, which we are right around the corner from and could easily hit by month's end. We're also giving away every day in December, a daily comic book variant. Today, we're giving away this insane exclusive variant of Null vs. Venom. Again, this is from our friends over at Street Level Hero. That's SLHLA.com and that Spider-Man booth. The winner is Alex K for this comment here. I just heard more X-Force. Go ahead and reach out to me on Instagram at I am Fires or email me on the business email under the about section on my channel. I'll verify your account and get this right out to you guys. And it's that simple. All the same rules apply for both the PlayStation giveaway and the daily comic giveaway and any of the future giveaways. All you gotta do, be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video because it's truly random. The more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will be announced at the end of videos the same way we're doing here and never in the comments. So please beware of scammers and spammers on my channel or really across YouTube or on any platform. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. And as always, if you liked today's video, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. My name's Michael Roman. You can find me in a couple of places, Instagram and Twitter at I Am Fires. You can also find me on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Apple, iTunes, under the name All Fires. And while I'd really sincerely appreciate you checking my original music out, thanks for checking this channel out. Stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon.